what is our salvation but to know and be known by God. I want to play a little song first before I talk. Walk in his light, come out of your darkness, lay down your soul, and take up his harness. We can't go on, living each day our own way, making our own to that song because it's a great song. I will in the comment. I wanted to talk about knowing God through suffering. I mean, we all know our own suffering. We know our own pain. We know our own sorrows. And we don't do well with them, actually. <laughs> but when we look to Jesus, who endured the cross, despising the shame, who suffered so greatly, it almost makes all of our suffering worth it when we get to know him. We can bear the suffering we go through in this life. So I want to talk about that for a minute. Because Galatians 4.8 talks about getting to know Jesus like you would get to know a better person, a person better. I was, I was thinking about God's feelings tonight, the fellowship of his suffering. When we turn to him in our own suffering, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. How painful is it to be shut out of people's hearts, distanced from people you love, because they get offended and they don't have the faith or the heart to work through their offenses? The great pain of being shut out by indifferent hard hearts. We all have probably had this kind of pain. The pain of people who have no hope or faith to work through problems, so they shut you out. They don't have the hope or they don't have the faith to actually love, not having faith that Jesus and humility actually is like bonding glue. And, you know, I usually don't feel very heartbroken, but I watched a, a movie tonight and I began feeling kind of weepy over the human suffering in my own soul that I usually do well in. I think the movie just stirred up that pain and suffering that resides there. I mean, there's times and seasons we all, we either stuff our feelings or they come back to haunt us. I heard a really good one about overeating. If you, if you don't know what's eating you, just stop overeating and then you'll know. I thought, man, there's a lot of wisdom there, but when people don't have um, the faith, again, to work through division, schisms, they walk in pride and we lie about our infirmities ourselves and it just makes us want to withdraw and throw in the towel in relationships to protect ourselves. Why? We just don't have the faith to love. Faith that God himself, who is love, will stand behind love. So just like any parent would stand behind the child who loves and rebuke the child who is selfish, right? God's like that too. I found some scriptures about God's pain tonight and are not hearing him, not understanding him, watching us ha have to suffer without him. I mean, when you think of, again, the father-the-child relationship, man, you can really see a lot. The parent, the child, child knows everything, right? Jeremiah 14 says, uh, says this, Jeremiah said to God, I mean, God said to Jeremiah, speak to them and tell them this from my heart. 
Tears shall run down my eyes day and night, and they shall not stop, because in that great ruin, the virgin of my people was broken by a blow and a severe pain. God weeps and takes no pleasure in watching the demise of his creation suffer his children due to rebellion and control, who suffer at their own hand and their evil imaginations about his character, like parents suffer who watch children reap tremendous consequences for what they sow. Gosh, when you think the parents that have to see what their children do, that's horrendous, you know, we all go through suffering. So it's learning how to touch that suffering well, which I think that's where Jesus comes in, makes all the difference in the world. So um, we not only can find comfort in our troubles, we find Jesus who can touch our infirmities. We can know more and more the Jesus who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, the cross of all the evil done by people who were selfish pleasure seekers. Gosh, we had such a great time texting today too about the little brat baby that acts like a child, thinks like a child, and speaks like a child in us that needs to be tamed every day. Because that little baby, that little brat baby opens the door to demonic activity. And we were, I had such a great time talking about that with my friends today. But when, you know, the Pharisees got really bent out of shape because people were acknowledging who Jesus was as he rode in on a donkey to the city. And they told Jesus to tell all those people to shut up. <laughs> they shouldn't have been glorifying it, glorifying the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, right? But in Luke 19, 40, he said to them, I say to you that if they would be silent, the stones would be crying out loud. And when he came near, he saw the city and he wept over the city. Jesus Christ wept over the city. So it's, it's deep, you know, it's really deep when you think about Jesus and his suffering. And when he came to, yeah, so if only, he said this, if only now you had known these things and, and, and had peace even in your day. But now these things are hidden from your eyes. The day shall come to you when your enemies shall surround you and they shall press you in from every side. They'll destroy you and your children with you and they shall not leave you one stone standing over another because you didn't know the time of your visitation. You know, it's a sad thing to go through life without knowing Jesus really and that spirit in us that's trying to compel us and talk to us all the time. So Psalm 34 puts it like this, when the righteous cry... Those who put their faith and trust in Jesus for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their distresses and troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit, contrite in heart, truly sorry for their sin and broken over the sins of others, not railing on other people that are sinners because you get your own sin, right? You can be merciful and pure in heart says many hardships and perplexing circumstances confront the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness in Genesis 1, And that's really powerful too, because in all of our emotions, just like a child, the parent understands a child, right? That's why it's good to love the Lord with all of our heart and love our neighbors ourselves. It, it's really in that in loving the Lord with all of our heart, that we actually do well. It's like the child knowing the father, right? The father already knows the kid. So <laughs> then God said, okay, let's see. The wicked plots against the righteous and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him for he sees his day is coming. This is Psalm 37. I'm talking about reading just some, reading some random scriptures about God's emotions. There's actually a lot of them. I take no pleasure in those that withdraw unto death to do good and communicate. This is a sacrifice that pleases God. If you do well in affliction and suffering, that pleases God too. So that's the whole point of being a Christian is learning how to do well and keep our good spirits. So um, one of the short, I think it's the shortest scripture in the Bible is Jesus wept. And why did he weep? 
because everybody around them was fearful and unbelieving. And, you know, he, he, he got, he wept, he was sad. He wept over their unbelief. It, it also says in another scripture that he wept over a whole city. He was sad over people's unbelief. He was compassionate. He was jealous, jealous because he created, created us to love and we give ourselves over to fear and unbelief and destruction instead. Jealous because we turn to what kills, steals, and destroys our lives. Jealous because he wants us to take us under his wing to protect us like a hen does their chicks. But as one of my friends puts it, we won't go into protective custody because, like Dan Song says that I just played, um, we want to do do our own thing our own way, right? We don't go into protective custody. It's kind of like Cain and Abel, Adam and Eve there again. So um, they lived in protected custody and then they left it because they got offended, right? Started thinking evil of the Lord. So Jesus was spit at. He was spit on. He was despised. He was rejected. He was held with very low esteem. So no doubt that he felt it, right? He actually probably had feelings with being beaten with whips with spikes on him. Um, he understood and understands how we feel. There's scriptures that say that. And, you know, all of man, all of mankind was projecting all their own sin upon him until he was being bearing the sin of all mankind as he was being crucified, they were throwing, projecting all their sin on him before that happened. All the hate, all the mocking, all the scorning, despising, those who misunderstood him. There's a really powerful song about that too. You were despised, you were rejected, Lord. It's a, it's a great song. Um, so, you know, that's also why God hates. Proverbs 6 is all about the things God hates, and there's a good reason that God hates those things. So there's all kinds of scriptures about how to please God, too, and they're not hard. It's not hard to do. Um, most of all, though, God hates pride, thinking we know. Just like little kids, you know, don't we hate it when they just think they know everything and you can't even talk to them? So let's see here. He also hates when we lean on our own understanding. There's scriptures about that too, and reject trusting him and the leading of his Holy Spirit in our soul. So God felt despised, he felt rejected. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it. There's an, you know, there's all kinds of scriptures about this. We can know God. And you know what? It helps us cope in life to know God, to know Jesus Christ, to know the Holy Spirit inside of us that gets grieved, denied, resisted. You know, we can, we can understand a lot about the Lord if we just look to him in our own feelings. Hebrews 4, for we don't have a high priest who is unable to sympathize and understand our weaknesses and temptations. But we have one who's been tempted, knowing exactly how it feels to be human in every respect as we are, yet without following sin, coming under the bondage of sin. Therefore, what a privilege it is to approach the throne of grace, God's gracious favor with confidence and without fear because he loves us, so that we may receive mercy for our failures, our sins, and find his amazing grace to help us in our time of need and propitiate, you know, imp let him impart some good thing to us because everything happens through impartation. And, you know, I had a great conversation about that the other day too because we're almost imparted everything that happens to us is that's bad is evil impartation and everything that's good we have to open our hearts up to have good imparted to us too 
anyway, I pray that this blesses somebody tonight. And get to know the Lord in your suffering. Amen.